crap. Pardon? <laughs> You should have gone to that restaurant. They're known for slow service there. Well, look at all of this traffic. Now, this client has changed contract three times already. Mm -hmm. What time is that meeting? We have about 10 minutes. Oh, God. We're really going to be late. The weather is so great this oh, time. Yeah, those poor guys up north, it's blizzarding. It's really nasty. I don't feel sorry for them oh. at all. Okay? Oh, oh God, look at it now. Are you okay? I think so. No, I don't know. Oh. Uh, look at uh, this now. What are we gonna do? Uh, are you alright? Oh. 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 No, I don't know. Now what do I do? What do you do? We will answer these questions and more on hidden damage. Car crashes happen every day. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reports that 117 people die each day from a car crash. That's one death every 12 minutes. And over two and a half million people are injured every year. This is a massive epidemic in our community. And yet, despite the problem, most people don't know what to do if they are injured in a car crash. Knowing what to do after a crash can save you headaches, time, and money. Hidden damage will show us what we need to know to protect ourselves. We've interviewed the top experts in their fields who will tell us key facts to help us avoid making mistakes that could really hurt us more than the crash itself. Stay tuned and learn about hidden damages. Are you okay? What happened? Some jerk just ran into the back of us. Are we gonna call the police? What do we do now? First thing you should do is check yourself for injuries and the occupants in your vehicle and the other vehicle. Upon doing that, make sure that the vehicles, if they are drivable, can be moved off the road. Then dial 911 if emergency help is needed or Make contact with your local police department to get a law enforcement officer at the traffic crash scene. What if you think you're injured? If you're injured, don't take a chance. Dial 911. You never know what's wrong. Have some professionals look at you to check you out, to be on the safe side. The adrenaline is flowing. You might feel like you're OK, but get checked out. Should we go to the hospital? What should we do? let's ask an emergency room doctor who has treated thousands of car crash victims. Dr. Soar, what is your advice for anyone in a car crash? As an emergency physician, my advice for anyone involved in a car crash is that you seek care immediately. Oftentimes, with the excitement and the adrenaline surge that occurs during a crash, you may not feel hurt, but you could be. So my advice would be to go to an emergency department right after the crash and let a trained professional evaluate you. Let them see if you have any serious injuries. Mommy, I don't want to go to the hospital. Nothing's broken. No one is bleeding. If we go to the hospital, won't they just tell us to go to our family doctor? Many people involved in a car crash go to the emergency department and are told their x-rays are normal. Just because we may tell you there are no broken bones, it does not mean that you're not injured. Normal x-rays can only tell us three things. First, they tell us that you don't have a broken bone that we can see. Second, they tell us that you don't have a gross dislocation of a joint. And third, they tell us that you don't have a tumor. If you had any of these three things, you'd be referred to an appropriate specialist right away. But again, just because they tell you that the x-rays are normal, it does not mean that you're not injured. X-rays don't hurt, and then we can go home. What happens after the emergency department visit? If you're not admitted to the hospital, you will probably be told to go home, take it easy, and avoid any strenuous activities, and follow up with another doctor for a more in-depth examination and treatment. 
do we have to go see Krabby Old Dr. Wiley? What kind of doctor should we see next? Our family doctor? Your family doctor may be appropriate for follow-up care, but for the majority of people, or at least for my family members, I would recommend that they follow up with a doctor who specializes in the treatment of injuries that can occur in a motor vehicle crash. A specialist has the training to diagnose and treat these injuries far beyond what we can do in the emergency department and better than most primary care doctors. So for the best care, find a specialist. Bobby, get back in here. Look, Mom, the van's not even wrecked. Can we just go home now? I guess if the car's not wrecked, we probably are okay, right? That is absolutely not true. People can have very significant injuries even if there's no damage to the car. If that were true, then all we'd have to do is look at a picture of the car, not see the patient, and as we all know, that's ridiculous. There is no way to tell how serious a person's injuries are from a picture of the car. You feeling any better today? Not really. You? And it's been three days since the crash and it just seems to get worse. Better call Doc Jones and make an appointment. Someone at the hospital said that we should call a specialist. But wouldn't my regular doctor be just as good? To help us answer that question, let's ask Dr. David Kalin, who is a specialist in treating car crash victims, who is certified in rating disabilities caused by car crashes. Dr. Kalin, why see a specialist? A specialist is more up to date in the latest diagnostic techniques, writes a more comprehensive medical report documenting your injury, and overall is able to treat you most efficiently and effectively. Rosemary said my neck pain was probably just a soft tissue injury and not to worry. Mm -hmm. You know, this from her vast medical knowledge gathered from watching General Hospital. Tell me it's no big deal. These soft tissue injuries are a big deal. They generally lead to ongoing feelings of tightness and pain and affect your activities of daily living. They cause an individual to feel as if he's aging more quickly than he should be. The body shop left a message that the scrapes on the bumper cleaned right off. It's like we weren't even run into. Then how can we be so messed up? There is no correlation between property damage and your injury. You can be severely injured in even an accident going less than five miles an hour. So what kind of doctor are we going to see? Why do I have to make these decisions? Why not just go to our HMO doctors? They may not have the experience or time to treat your injury in the way that it needs to be treated. They may not document it completely and they may not have the incentive to order the types of tests which are useful in documenting the type of injury you have sustained. And honey, what about the time you fell at work and hurt your back? So what if I'd been hurt before? You should absolutely tell your doctor about any types of injuries you've had prior to this accident. Pre-existing injuries either lead to an increased risk of more injury or a more severe injury when you've had this particular accident. Do you still have those medical records? I don't know. Why are they so important? Medical records are extremely important. Having full documentation and evidence proving what your injury is, how you're reacting from it, and whether you have any permanent injury is absolutely important. All the insurance company or an attorney or the government will have in reviewing your case will be your medical records. Do you remember Margaret's neck problem? Do I have to? Yes. What was that thing they used to finally find out her problem? A standing up MR something. MRI. MRI. What exactly is an MRI? Dr. Manuel Rose, who is a board-certified radiologist who has helped pioneer research in MRIs, has agreed to help us understand MRI. Dr. Rose, what is an MRI? An MRI is magnetic resonance imaging, and it's a tool and a machine and a series of computers that uh, allows us to visualize the anatomy of the human body and the soft tissues in exquisite anatomic detail. And I suppose you glow when you get out. 
an MRI is a magnet, it's, so it's not dangerous. It really can be uh, used to image pregnant women, fetuses, as opposed to ionizing radiation such as x-rays. So uh, to this date, there are no known side effects or problems or uh, uh, adverse effects that can occur from having an MRI. Why is standing up better? Uh, many MRIs are different. You have high field MRIs where enclosed magnet or you have upright MRIs. Upright MRI is clearly the best magnet to look at spinal injuries because our uh, anatomy changes from lying down to sitting to walking to standing and it's better to look at the spine in the upright posture because herniations are often present in the upright posture that might not be present in the lying down posture and that's why patients often will feel better lying down compared with the upright uh, walking or seated or standing postures. So, will one of these exams really help find the source of our pain? MRI is the best way to look for spinal injury because it allows you exquisite detail in anatomy of the cord. It can allow you to look at herniated discs. It can allow you to look at uh, compression and impingement of nerve roots that sometimes will translate into symptoms in a patient. And if a patient has symptoms in a particular area, you can focus the MRI at that area and see if it's pinching on a nerve, thus causing symptoms. Try these, Jean. What is it you're trying to look up anyway? Well, at work on Fridays, a few of us usually go out to lunch. A couple weeks ago, we were hit by a car from behind. Oh my goodness, are you okay? I'm fine, but everybody else was seriously injured. How badly? Mostly whiplash, which I thought was like a sprain. Do you want to start by looking that up? I'm not sure. What exactly is whiplash? Let's find that out by asking Dr. Stephen Whitelaw, who is an expert in whiplash. Dr. Whitelaw, what is whiplash? Whiplash is a common name for neck injury. It ranges from muscle pulls to stretched and torn ligaments in the neck, to herniated discs and sometimes even fractured bones. Some whiplashes are serious and some heal without any problem. Maybe we should start with this. Mary, and I don't need a medical degree, I just want to know. What happens to your body in a car crash? First, let's start with your anatomy. Your head weighs approximately 12 pounds, and it's all sitting on top of your neck. It's sort of like a bowling ball on a pencil. So when you get hit from behind in a relatively low speed crash, the car starts to move out from underneath you, but your head stays still for a fraction of a second. There are basically four different phases that your body goes through. In phase one, the car gets knocked from underneath you. During phase two, you ride back into the car seat. In phase three, your body is thrown forward like a diver coming off a diving board. You come flying off the back of your seat. And in phase four, your head flexes forward as your chest is stopped by the seat belt. What happened to the car that hit you? It was totaled, but he was fine. Why didn't he get hurt? The driver of the car that hits the other one rarely gets hurt because of a few things. First, our necks handle forward stopping without a problem. We can jump, climb, run, all sorts of activities. And the neck is designed for these types of forces. But the neck can't handle being hit from behind nearly as well. So the bad driver usually knows they're about to hit something and they can brace with their arms. Was the car you were in totaled? No, and judging from the damage to the car, I'm surprised that anyone could be hurt. Is there any connection between the damage to the car and the injuries to the people in the car? None whatsoever. This is an insurance company trick and myth that they use to confuse the public about the risk of injuries from these types of crashes. This trick is effective because it sort of makes sense. How can anyone be hurt if the car is not damaged? But as scientists, we know there is no connection between property damage and injuries. The steel bumper and frame or the plastic bumper and frame of the car may not be damaged, but all of the forces from the crash must go somewhere. And unfortunately, your body may take the brunt of the force. And you may be seriously injured, even if there's not a scratch on the car. With basic physics or Newton's law, we can look at Newton's cradle. These are the hanging steel balls in which you can raise one and let go. When they hit, force travels without movement until the ball at the other end begins to move. This is how energy is transferred. 
there is no damage to the steel balls, but the energy from the initial ball striking transfers through causing the last one to move. And the energy has to go somewhere, and most often the energy goes into the human's head and neck inside the car. This is an example of an elastic collision between the balls. Elastic collisions don't injure the cars, but they do injure people. Now let's ask Dr. John Polstowaite, the developer of Motion X-Ray, to help further explain how our necks are injured in a crash. Certainly, as we know, the head weighs approximately 12 pounds, which is very similar to the weight of a bowling ball. Our head is attached to the cervical spine to these little tiny bones at the very top of our neck. What happens to the, the bowling ball or the skull during a whiplash is when we're hit from the rear, the, the shoulders are pushed forward. The head, according to physics, does not move. And it actually forms an S-shaped curve. And then it slingshots backwards and then back forward. And this is what causes the tearing of these ligamentous structures. It happens instantaneously in less than a second's time. And that's why a lot of times following the whiplash, we have headaches and posterior neck pain. We'll be needing some additional information from you before we can authorize your rental car. Additional information from you before, information from you before, additional information from What more information does he want? He wants to come over to our house. Why don't we go over to his house? Dad, settle down, your blood pressure. I don't want to do anything that's going to cost us a fortune. How can we help protect our finances when we deal with the claims adjuster? What mistakes should we watch out for? Let's ask Mr. Derek Sams. The most common mistakes I see are not going to the doctor or emergency room right away. Some people are more worried about their car than their health. Many people lose witnesses or other valuable evidence they may need. Some people don't photograph their car before it's fixed. Too often, they give a recorded statement to the insurance adjuster without help from a lawyer. Many people feel pressured by the insurance company and they settle their claim too fast for too little money. And what about this adjuster guy? Adjusters are trained professionals who have access to your personal and confidential information. They hire investigators to spy on you and your family. I know this because I used to work for an insurance company for over seven years. I have handled all types of injury claims. First, I can't get them on the phone. Now I can't get them to leave me alone. Soon after the crash, be ready for an insurance adjuster to call. The adjuster will have lots of questions and will want you to give them all sorts of information. They may even offer to settle the case with you right away. As well they should. Settling your case right away is probably a bad idea. The adjuster who calls you probably knows more about your injuries than you do. The insurance adjuster would love to settle your claim right away, before your injuries get worse, and before you see a good doctor. If they can settle with you early, they can save the company tons of money. They may offer you a quick $500 if you sign a release today. Once you sign a release, your claim is over. You can never go back and get more money, no matter what happens. I haven't even been able to get to see a doctor. Now they want me to give a recorded statement. For what? The adjuster will insist that you give them a recorded statement and really pressure you. Most people fall for this and give a statement hoping the insurance company will finally fix their car or start paying their medical bills. So innocently, they give a recorded statement. I was run into. Now my back hurts. I might as well make a recording stating so, right? They use your statement to trap you. If you make a simple mistake, or you say you don't know some fact or detail about the crash, they will use this against you later. If you make a statement before you know all the facts, it will hurt you later. They may be able to place some blame or fault for the crash on you, which may cost you tens of thousands of dollars. The insurance company never takes a recorded statement to help you. They only want